morning, happy Friday. We're painting again, so it's an extra happy Friday. Um, so starting off, I'm gonna be painting on a square canvas today, and I'm playing around here with a little bit of a different color scheme. So I'm testing it out on a piece of paper first. This is sort of an indigo purple, a purplish indigo, and then my iridescent gold that I love so much. I have played around with gold with a bluer indigo, uh, and I had a, a viewer recommend or suggest that I try purple and yellow, and <clears throat> I don't play around with yellow a lot, but I do love my gold, and I thought, well, why not try purple and gold together? And I had this indigo that was premixed that was a little too purple for my liking, and it had just been sitting in the bottle. So I thought, let's try painting where it's predominantly that color. So there you have it. That's my little test piece. It sort of looks like a bird. Um, there's how it shimmers in the light. I really like the overlay. There's something about purple and yellow together. They're complementary colors, which is a, a vocabulary word that I teach my art students, which means that they are opposite on the color wheel, purple and yellow are. So they look bolder and brighter when set beside each other, but if you mix them together, they have so many of the colors in the color wheel that they just mix together to make uh, like a technically a neutral color of some sort, a brown, a gray, uh, a muddy poop color. But something, and, and so the other, the other complementary pairs would be green and red or blue and orange. But there's something about purple and yellow. I love playing around with that combination in watercolor as well. They, the, the neutral that they create is really appealing to me. So I wasn't too worried about them mixing together and making a muddy color on my canvas. Also, I've noticed, I don't know if you guys have noticed, that metallics don't muddy up as much as your average pigments. Has anyone else noticed that? I don't know. I, I feel like the more metallics I use, the less likely my, my combinations are to get muddy. So I've been doing a lot of the dual tone swipes lately. That's why you see here that I'm preparing my square canvas today with the indigo purple going almost to the top, but not quite, sort of trying to mimic a, a landscape horizon of some sort. Getting the sides, smoothing it out. Also, you can't really tell from this angle, but I have started tilting my canvas a little bit at the recommendation of the lovely Kathleen Osmore because I was having a lot of puddling, and though this is a fresh new canvas, I'm not painting over something else. I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't somehow getting a puddle somewhere or getting it too thick. So if it was a little too much paint in one area, it would just flow off. But it looks like everything's staying in place pretty well. Got my gold, smoothing that out working on the sides. Uh, to spread my paint, as you can see there, I'm just using little postcard mailers, junk mail that I get in the mail, mostly from school. You would not believe the junk mail that companies send to teachers. And we don't have time to read that stuff. So it all just goes in the recycling. So every once in a while, I'll just run into the recycling bin there under our mailboxes in the workroom, and I'll just grab up all the, the junk mail. And so I have stacks and stacks. I have more of that cardstock stuff to spread than I could use in three years. So if anybody wants some, come get it. I've got plenty. Okay, here we go. 
um, talking to myself with my hands. I just, I talk to myself a lot. Do you guys talk to yourself? I talk to myself a lot. All right, tilting the canvas the opposite way just to make sure that that gold is also flowing off nicely. You can definitely see some thick and thin spots there. Okay, so here's a fun thing that I'm trying. As you see, I am trying something new. I'm trying to do the swipe line in a different spot than where I established my dual tone background. Why, you might ask? Well, in true abstract landscapes, you have a foreground and a background, so I thought this might uh, help to achieve that, but also there's the rule of thirds that you learn in photography especially, but any good compositional design where you divide your canvas up, or your composition up into thirds. So we're trying it. Uh, the colors I'm using here, uh, I use my iridescent gold and my purplish indigo again, and then I've got uh, the iridescent pearl. Then I did a smidgen of the burnt sienna on either side, but it looks like I sort of avoided the middle. And then I did a little more pearl, because I love iridescent pearl. Iridescent pearl is the best. There I go, swiping. And down. And I'm holding the paper towel over top to allow for some drips to fall because that happened a couple times accidentally and I ended up loving it. So that has become a thing that I do every time. And the brown showed up just enough, didn't take over, which I'm very happy about. I'm not so keen on the gold at the top, which I did that on purpose, right? That was the, the horizon line in the dual tone background. But it feels a little unfinished. So what am I doing? I'm going up there and I'm thickening up the gold, making sure that it flows over the edge. And you can see how it's flowing down because, again, the canvas is tilted towards us a little bit from the top. Canvas. Oh! That looks like a Kathleen Osmore ripple swipe right there. So, in this painting, I promised myself that I would not have the audio on. I wouldn't talk to you while I was painting, which is why I'm doing this voiceover. And that I would allow myself time to play. <clears throat> so I'm cutting up these little postcard strips in order to break up the space a little more. And again, I didn't really like the area at the top, so I'm hemming and hawing over what I can do to make it more appealing. So I've got some wide pieces, I've got some thin pieces, and I am just sort of breaking up that line and covering up some things that I didn't like. I'm sitting in my kitchen. I've got my coffee press here. I'm going to pour myself some coffee because it's been steeping while I've been talking. Hope you don't mind. Have you guys ever used a coffee press? It makes the best coffee. It's a little bougie, but mm, it's good coffee. Okay, so I'm playing around with the sides. Uh, it looks like I'm picking up some paint that has fallen and just sort of coating the edge and also maybe some thin spots around the edge on the top but also on the sides. My head keeps getting in the way, sorry. Okay, 
This is another trick that I have learned watching Kathleen Osmore on her new channel, Cause Creations Art. She uh, takes a little skewer. I have a bamboo stick. I don't have any skewers. And she picks up some paint. I'm just picking up the gold drips from the paper below. And she accentuates by drawing some lines. Um, so I decide to use the cup, but my cup doesn't have any gold in it, so I'm going to pour some more gold in it, or not. So I'm pulling more of the gold down from the top. God, I really love this purple and yellow, but also that brown added in, right? Like, it just, it takes the punch out of it slightly. And I can't wait for you guys to see the dry shot of this thing. It is spectacular. So, uh, do you ever have one of those moments where you're not sure which orientation the canvas should go? I'm having one of those moments. Is this the top? Is this the bottom? I don't know. So I start sort of working more from that end, and then I start seeing that from that end, and then I decide that that is possibly going to be the bottom of the canvas. So we're sort of looking at it upside down right now. So, I think I'm going to flip it for you. And here we go, we're gonna flip. Now. Okay, so this is the orientation that the painting's gonna end up being I, I guess I thought that the gold would be the distant glowing sky, but I think it's ending up being the foreground grassiness. I don't know. I hate to refer to parts of my painting as actual things because I want them to remain abstract, but also it sort of helps me to envision a composition that works when I can compare it to foreground, middle ground, and background objects that we would see in real life, if that makes sense. Okay, so I finished up with the gold skewer. I'm noodling, I'm noodling. Not a lot happening. And I've got another floppy piece of the postcard. I'm, I'm considering it. Am I gonna do another swipe? Oh, there we go. Because the, honestly, the skewer wasn't showing up. So I do a couple of thin swipey swipes. Haphazardly, it seems. This is slightly sped up, but really, like, I should be more careful. I'm talking to myself again. See my hands going? I even talk to myself with my hands can't make up my mind. There we go. Getting some more drama in there. Pulling in some skinny lines, breaking up that space a little more. Oh, am I going to go big? I'm swiping. Playing around with different sizes. Ooh. Oh yeah. Look at that. Picked up a lot of paint, got a little spinny dribble, allowed the drips to fall. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm excited. I clapped. Courtney said, yes sirree Bob. So then that emboldened me to do more. Uh-oh. That was a 
that was a finger waggle at myself because I used the same swipe piece twice, which pulled some purple into the gold, which at the moment I thought was a mistake. But I think you'll agree, it looks nice. So happy mistakes, happy accidents. But happy accidents need friends. So I take a little bit of the purple indigo and I put it in that corner and I'm trying to figure out how to sort of, there we go, another swipe, oh, tried to, <laughs> I'm so messy, did you see, I just tried to like scrape it off on the side and then I got some gold smooshed into that swipe that I just made that was so nice, but I fixed it. So I think I was trying to say, oh, you need to see this though. I shouldn't talk through this. So on the little piece of cardboard that's off screen, unfortunately, come on. I picked up some gold and then I dribbled some more of the purple onto it. And then I'm making fake drips, fake swipe drips, and I'm dropping them onto the canvas. Oh. That's unfortunate that you can't see that on screen. So I had never really done that before, but it was effective to manufacture those drips. And the reason I say they had to be manufactured and not just drips is I had to sort of mix the paints and allow them to flow through each other as they would on the swipe paper. So it's not just dripping purple onto the canvas or dripping gold onto the canvas. I had to pick up some gold onto one of those swipe cards and then drip some purple onto it and allow it to flow back and forth before I dripped so that it, it was encircling itself. I wish that showed on camera better. So here I'm just touching up the sides. Back to the happy accidents. I think the point that I wanted to make was that if you make a happy accident and you like it, you just need to give it some friends because then it looks purposeful, if you know what I'm saying. If it's just one thing that stands out, it doesn't look like you meant to do it. But if you do two or three, the magic, the magic number is three, honestly. All right, here is a finished shot. That thing is gorgeous, you guys. I am so excited. Again, this is sort of upside down. I think I swing around to the other side. The two swipes that sort of break the swipe line, the two vertical swipes that break the swipe line and have the little skippy dribbles coming off of them, the little swirly worms, look at that. I mean, come on. I'm so excited. And the purple just glows in some spots and there's no muddiness. That, look at that. And the drips. I love it so much. Here's some more still shots. There's a shot of the side. This is a one and a half inch gallery wrap profile canvas, level three. I can't wait for you guys to see the still shots. It, it, it's nice and shimmery and the purple deepened, but that upper, the upper portion it's just so iridescent and shimmery. Mm -hmm. So here are the dry shots. Tried to go outside where I can get some sunlight. Um, the pearl is just laying right on top so nicely that it's like a veil and the contrast with the dark purple is where it's at, I'm telling you, and that brown, the burnt sienna, just adds a little bit of a 
oily, oil slick iridescence somehow. <sighs> and here I'm holding it, trying to show you how it shimmers in the light. Can you see that? Oh, and I almost drop it, but I don't. Man, oh man, I love it so much. I hope you do too. So this is a 20 inch by 20 inch gallery wrapped one and a half inch profile canvas. Will be available for sale on my website. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks to all my patrons as always. You guys rock. And I hope you have a lovely, lovely, lovely day. Did you know that I have a Patreon now as well as a Teespring account? You can support me by becoming a patron or you could buy some merch. There's a banner down below where you can buy t-shirts, hoodies, tank tops, kids shirts, also coffee mugs. Also if you like this video don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe and click the bell if you want to get notified of my next videos. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye.